Chester presents the Screen Guild Players. The Lady Esther Screen Guild play tonight, The Uninvited. The starring players... This is Ray Milland. This is Ruth Hersey. And this is Betty Field. Tonight, Lady Esther brings you the Screen Guild players in Dorothy McArdle's famous story, The Uninvited, presented here through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and Curtis Brown Limited. It stars Ray Milland as Rick, Ruth Hussey as his sister Pamela, and Betty Field as Stella Meredith. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in The Uninvited. a lovely house, set back a little from the edge of the cliff, a sort of timeless house, like the timeless sea over which it watched. A friendly house, yet there was something strange about it from the very first. We discovered it quite by accident, my sister and I, a deserted house that obviously hadn't been lived in for years. And like a couple of kids, we just had to explore it, upstairs and down, every nook and cranny, all but the one room that was locked. And then Pamela, being Pamela, began to get ideas. Rick, I do hate living in a London flat, and you could work down here. You could write great music, and I could grow flowers, and Lizzie can take care of the house. Oh, Rick, we've got to have it. We've just got to, Rick. I will admit it didn't take much to persuade me. We learned the house was owned by an old retired sea captain, and Pam would have nothing, so we'd go and make him an offer at once. That was how we first met Stella Meredith. My grandfather isn't in at the moment, but I expect him shortly. Won't you come in? Thank you. I'm Roderick Fitzgerald, and this is my sister, Pamela. How do you do? I'm Stella Meredith. Please sit down. Well, as a matter of fact... Oh, but... not in that chair. It's got a lumpy seat. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry Grandfather isn't here. Can I help you in any way? We want to talk to Commander Beach about a house he owns on the top of the cliff. Oh, Windward House. Yes, you see, we've fallen head over heels at the... Uh, oh, I mean, uh, well, we might consider it. Really? Uh, Mrs. Brown at the inn told us it's for sale. Mrs. Brown is mistaken. Well, perhaps if we could talk to your grandfather. It wouldn't do the slightest good. But if we could... I'm sorry, there's really no use in your waiting. And may I suggest that... Uh, Stella, Stella, are you there? Yes, grandfather. In here. Uh, it's starting to rain. I thought... Uh, hello, what's this? Just some people who came here by mistake. Oh, no, no, we heard that Windward House was for sale. Uh, it is, if you'd like to... Grandfather, may I see you outside for a if moment? Our guests will excuse us. Of course, go right ahead, sir. Grandfather, please. Uh, Stella, I, I thought I'd made myself quite clear on this point. Yes, I know, but you... I, I don't understand you. A house you haven't been in since you were a child. A piece of property we can't afford to maintain. But it was my mother's house. Oh, I can't put it into words. Please, Grandfather. Nonsense. If they'll make a decent offer, it's theirs. <laughs> took our very first offer, almost grabbed at it. But Pam and I were too happy to think about it much. Within an hour, we were back at the house, our house now, and the first thing, of course, we had to investigate the room that was locked. Oh, not that key, Rick, the other one. Oh, I can't wait to see what's in this room. Oh, probably the linen press, the slops and mops and pieces of string. There you are. Oh. Well, now I know why the old boy kept it locked. It's the one ugly room in the house. Oh, it's not so bad. But that hideous high window, all out of proportion. It's facing north. It must have been a painter's studio. What do we do with it? Well, my workroom, of course. It's ideal. Piano over here with shelves and music, manuscripts all over the floor. Oh, get your feet off that concerto. Hot pincers to tear the flesh off anyone who keeps telling me lunch is ready and... Uh... Pam, do you think this room is damp? Sort of clammy? Well, it's raining, darling. Everything's soggy. It shouldn't be in here. The window's closed. Oh, Lord. What is it, Rick? I don't know. I suddenly felt completely flattened. Oh, it's just a letdown after all the excitement. What you need is a... Uh... Is a what? Rick, look out there by that tree. 
Stella Meredith. I think she's been crying. As if it weren't wet enough with the rain. Oh, but Rick, she adored this house, and we've cast her out. Oh, that's silly. She wasn't living here. Didn't want us to live here either. Well, maybe you've forgotten what heartbreak's like. Sentimental rubbish, Pam. She just wants to be sorry for her, and I, I'm not, that's all. Aren't you? Huh? <laughs> oh, don't be stupid. Probably never see her again. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like some cigarettes, please. Twenty towers. Yes, sir. Uh, I beg pardon, sir. Uh, Bain't you the new owner of Winwood House, sir? Yes. News gets about this village rather quickly, doesn't it? No, it's only natural, sir. I mean, seeing as a house has never held a tenant very long, account of the rumors, I suppose, sir. Rumors? Uh, well, uh, the way the lady of the house died and all. God rest her soul. Commander's daughter? Only child. He's never been the same since she fell off the cliff. Accident? That's what I do say, an accident. Ah, it, here's your cigarette, sir. Uh, good luck. Thank you. I'll be in again. Good day. <clears throat> Mr. Fitzgerald. Huh? Oh, it's you. Please, I want to talk to you about yesterday. I was disgustingly rude. <laughs> At least we agreed on that. Did your grandfather tell you to apologize? Oh, no. It was my mother. Your... But I thought that... I lay awake all night thinking how I'd let her down. If I only were more like her. But isn't your mother... Yes, she's dead. But I know all about her. You see, that's why I love Windward House so much. Because she lived there three years. And that's why I don't want anyone else to live in it. That's foolish, isn't it? Well, it's foolish to be living someone else's life. How old are you, Stella Meredith? Twenty. Mm -hmm. You're twenty and you're pretty and you shouldn't be wasting a single second looking back. You should be having fun. I am. Oh, nonsense. What are you doing today, for instance? Oh, just things. Facts, details. Come on. Well, I'm taking some wool to the home for retired gentlewomen. My mother used to go there once a week. Then I must stop at the lending library and get a book. Mm -hmm. And um, then I've got to go home and read to Grandfather. Is that all? That's all. Mm -hmm. And I, on the other hand, must drive to London, keep a dinner engagement, speak to my publisher, see my lawyer, and... Oh, and I'm wasting your time. Oh, no, because I'm not going to do any of those things. Do you know what I am going to do? What? I'm going to hire a boat. We'll go for a sail, you and I, just the two of us. Oh, no, I can't. I, I really shouldn't. <laughs> Neither should I, but I'm going to. Uh, correction, please, we're going to. <laughs> It is nice out here. I'm glad we came. Aren't you? Aren't you? Are you asleep? I don't know. I feel too lazy to find out. You'll be horribly burned lying in the sun that way. I'd better put my handkerchief over your face. There, is that better? Mm-hmm. Smells nice. That's mimosa. Mimosa? It was my mother's favorite perfume. My father sent me a bottle before he died. Do you like it? I like you. We were talking of perfume. <clears throat> yes, now I was thinking of you. How much nicer your hair is when it isn't bound back tight about your head. Loose, free, windblown. <laughs> Am I talking high poetry or hairstyle advertising? You laugh at everything, don't you? Too much? Oh, no. Just that I've never known anyone who laughed much. Then it's high time you did. You might see a lot of Pamela while I'm gone. Oh, I think I shall. I'm sure I'd like that. Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, Rick. Yes? I want you to know. I'm terribly happy you and your sister are going to live at Windward House. Oh, I thank you, Stella Meredith. So am I. Strange. Stella Meredith never called on Pam. I discovered that three weeks later when I returned from London, bringing with me the last of our household. Whiskey, our cat, and old Lizzie, our cook. Our cat and our cook. They were the first ones to give me a sign. A sign I didn't even see. It was that very first evening, in fact. We were on the stairs, going up to our rooms. I'll take the cat up to my room, Miss Pamela. 
Preacher's used to staying with me. Up you go now. Get along with you. Isn't that strange? It won't even move. Oh, well, it, it's the new house, Lizzie, and he's not used to traveling. But his fur is up and he's out. In the name of heaven, what ails these candles? Oh, it, it's the draft, that's all. The stairway's drafty. Funny, miss. I didn't feel any breeze at all. But finally, it reached me, too. Later that night, just before dawn... Who's there? Who is it? Rick. Pamela. Shh. We, we don't want to wake Lizzie. But isn't it Lizzie? No. No, it isn't Lizzie. It's coming from downstairs. It comes from everywhere and nowhere. You mean you've heard it before? Yes. Rick, it's true, isn't it? You're hearing it, too. Of course I'm hearing it. I wasn't sure. I... I thought I might be going crazy. Now, Pam, please get a hold of yourself. Oh, I'm all right, Rick. It'll stop soon now. It always dies away at dawn. Listen. It's gone. Why didn't you tell me about it, Pam? Because I made you buy this house. It's all we've got to live in. Oh, Rick, Oh, steady I... now, Pam, steady. Just keep calm. There must be a logical explanation for it. I'll look into it first thing in the morning. Mr. Fitzgerald, you are the owner of Windward House now. Why bring this matter to me? Because I want some information, Commander Beach. These noises have made my sister frantic. She almost believes there's a ghost in the house. Oh, if there are any noises, they come from natural causes. An echo from some subterranean cave. There's been a lot of erosion in those cliffs, you know. Was your daughter ever troubled when she lived in the house? What do you mean? Did she hear the crying? My daughter was not the sort to circulate such ridiculous rumors. But if she'd heard it, she'd have spoken of it, and she never did? Certainly not. Well, then the trouble must have started after her death. I beg your pardon? Do you imply... I imply? I'm merely trying to fix the date when... when the... Oh, good heavens, I didn't mean that your daughter haunts How the dare you mention such a thing? But, Commander, really, I'm most desperately and sorry. And another thing, young man. My daughter is in delicate health. She is not strong enough to make new friends. What's wrong with this, Commander? Why won't you let Stella see us? Because I don't care to. And I must ask you for your word not to send her any more invitations. I'll give you no such undertaking. Then I shall deal with the matter in my own way, sir. Stella is not going inside that house. Why not? If you only tell me why you... Good Lord. You believe the place is haunted. <laughs> Lady Esther has presented Act One of The Uninvited, starring Ruth Hussey, Ray Milan, and Betty Field. In just a moment, we will hear the Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Act Two. But first, a word from our hostess, Lady Esther. Stop for a moment and think of the sweetest, loveliest infant you've ever seen. Think of that baby's face, of its skin, soft and smooth as satin. Now here's what I promise you. I promise you a skin that looks as smooth and delicate as a baby's, that feels as soft and fine-textured as a baby's cheek against your own. And here's why I can make that promise. I found a way to produce face powder that has what I call baby texture, face powder that gives your skin a real baby-smooth finish. You see, my powder, Lady Esther Face Powder, is made differently, made by my own exclusive patented method. It looks different on your skin. It makes your skin seem smoother and finer textured. It helps hide little marks and blemishes, helps cover up tiny lines. It even seems to soften the curves and angles of your face so that you appear more youthful and feminine. And here's another important thing about Lady Esther Face Powder. It has a sort of magnetic attraction for the skin. It clings in a delicate, invisible film that doesn't rub off, that stays fresh, smooth, and attractive for hours without repowdering. Just think of all these many extras that Lady Esther Face Powder brings you. Baby smooth texture. Rich, warm, exciting shades. Long clinging flattery that stays with you hour after hour. Surely you want to try Lady Esther Face Powder. 
the baby texture face powder that makes you look more beautiful. And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of The Uninvited, starring Betty Field as Stella, Ray Milland as Rick, and Ruth Hussey as his sister, Pamela. Rick continues our story. Of course, I was troubled by my talk with the commander. But as it turned out, there were two strong wills in that family, his and Stella's. We invited her to dinner that night, and over the old man's furious objections, she came. I remember now, it was just about dusk. We'd had our coffee, and Stella and I were in my studio. She was standing near me as I played. It's strange, isn't it? This is where my father used to paint. Usually, he'd paint my mother. In a soft white dress. Sometimes, of course, he'd paint the other one. The other one? He had a model, a foreign girl. I've never been able to find out much about her. (laughs) Between you and me and the grand piano, I suspect Father was a bit of a bad hat. (laughs) The artistic temperament? Very artistic, I'm afraid. Sometimes, you know, it's quite a comfort to me. In what way? Well, if father had been as good as mother, think how disgustingly good I'd have been. <laughs> what's, what's that you're playing? Well, it's about time you asked. It's something I've been working on, a serenade. To Stella by Starlight. You mean this, Stella? But it's the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. Is it? Oh, don't stop, please. I mean... Stella, what is it? I don't know. Just then... I felt so cold. So... Ah! Mr. Rick! Mr. Rick! Lizzie! Lizzie, what's the matter? Mr. Rick, I saw it. I saw it, Mr. Rick. Right here in the door. What in the world are you talking about? Like a mist, it was. Crawling mist. Oh, for heaven's sake, Rick, what's going on? Oh, Lizzie thinks you've been seeing things, Sam. A woman. It was a woman I saw. Four steps back, it was just a mist. A woman, I swear it. The ghost of a woman. Oh, Lizzie, stop oh, that. A ghost, it was. Stella, ghost. Stella, don't let her frighten you. <laughs> Uh, no, I... I... Stella! Catch her, Rick! What happened, Pam? She's in a dead faint. You'd better fetch a doctor. Doctor, is she all right? I'll be able to take her home in a bit. It's rather a nasty case of shock. You sure that's all? Quite sharp. What brought it on? Oh, I'll cook, I'm afraid. She thought she was seeing things and... Rick, stop hiding your head in the sand. You know very well there's something in this house. You heard the sounds last night yourself. Dr. Scott, I'll leave it to you. As a man of science... Uh, Hold on now, hold on. There are some things that even science can't explain. Then there is something queer about this place. You've got to tell us, Doctor, everything you know. Well, of course, I'm a newcomer at the village. I've only lived here for 12 years. (laughs) (laughs) But I believe it goes back to when Stella's parents were alive. Her father was a painter, you know, and there was a model involved. Her name was Carmel, a Spanish gypsy in a thoroughly bad lot. So was Meredith, from what I can gather. Didn't Mrs. Meredith suspect? Oh, she must have. It was an open scandal. But she was one of those rare, perfect women. Gentle as she was beautiful. She wouldn't drive the girl out, and in the end, it cost her her life. How? It's said that Meredith tired of the girl. And one night, in a fit of jealousy, she took the child, Stella was just an infant then, and ran for the cliff. Mary caught her just at the edge. They struggled there, and Mary fell. Why, that could have been murder. It's been hinted at. And the girl, this Carmel, where is she now? Dead. She died in this very house about a week later. Pneumonia. And Meredith is dead, too? Yeah, three years ago, abroad. He never came back. All of them dead, with their secrets. I wish they'd taken their cold, noisy troubles with them. But, Rick, if if spirits come back, it's for some special purpose. We've got to find out what it is. If we could just get at the... Just what? Rick, did did you bring in any flowers tonight? No. Why? Don't you notice the scent? 
It's overpowering, and it came so suddenly. Extraordinary. Heliotrope, isn't it? No. No, it's Mimosa. Rick, why do you say it like that? Is anything wrong? I don't know, Pamela. I... Rick! Rick! Stella, you're supposed to be lying down. Can you smell it, Rick? All around us. Mimosa. <laughs> My mother's perfume. Now, now, look here, young lady. You're all overwrought. I, I think I'd better take you home. Oh, no. I want to stay... Rick, I can stay, can't I, Rick? No, my dear, you'd better go. There's something evil in this place for you, and you mustn't come here anymore. But I must come. My mother's here, I know it now. She's been waiting for me all this time. Stella, please, this is horrible, unhealthy stuff. Put it out of your mind. Turn your back on this place and run, run hard, for my sake, darling. She's been waiting here. I'll come back somehow. You won't, I promise you. I will. I will. One way or another, I'll come back. The old gentleman was like a tiger when I got to her home. He roared and shouted till I had to assume my most professional manner and warn him he was apt to have a stroke. Well, Dr. Scott, you didn't send for us just to tell us that. Almost midnight. Well, frankly, I, I did some thinking when I got home. You see, my predecessor here was Dr. Rudd. I bought his practice after he died. Naturally, he attended the Merediths. And I thought perhaps if he'd made some notes on the accident. Of course. A case history. Did you find it, Doctor? Anything in it? Uh, here, read it for yourself. November 4th. Called Windward House, Meredith's model, Carmel Kesara, pneumonia. And there's another entry for December the 8th. Girl at Windward, much worse. No attempt to warm room. Traces... Of snow on bedroom floor. Yes. Snow? Well, then the window was left open. Wait, listen to this. Return to Windward this evening. Patient dead. Commander Beach threatened legal action when I accused him of criminal negligence. Criminal negligence? But that means... Yes. And a man like Dr. Rudd used a phrase like that. It was very apt to mean murder. Do you think we should have come here so late at night? The commander might charge us for breaking in. We didn't break in. The door was open. Pam, I've got to know the truth. Rick. Did you speak to him, Doctor? What did he say? He didn't say anything, Rick. He's dead. Dead? From a stroke, apparently, in a moment of high anger. And Stella? The Stella isn't here. Her bed's not been slept in. But where would she go in the middle of the night? Where would... Good heavens, Windward House. Oh, Rick, hurry. We've got to catch her. <laughs> I'm coming, Mother. I'm coming to you. I'm coming. Stella! Stella, wait! The cliff! You're calling me, Mother. I know. I can feel. I'm coming to you. Stella! Stella, stop! Don't move! Don't take another step! Oh, darling, one more step. Rick! Where am I? What is it? What? It's all right, Stella, dear. You've nothing to worry about now. Dr. Scott, Rick, bring her inside. I think we could all do with a cup of coffee. But I don't understand. I had no sense of fear, of danger. That's what makes it so horrible. Carmel's been waiting for you all these years. It was to be her revenge for what your grandfather did. A temporary madness, no doubt. Brought on by grief over Mrs. Meredith's death. He loved my mother very much. She was so good, so beautiful. Well, we got here in time. Thank heaven for that. Why not thank Dr. Rudd? If it hadn't been for this notebook of his, we... We what? What is it? Rick, the notebook. Look how the pages are fluttering. It's opening. No, not. It's just the wind, that's all. But I can smell the mimosa now. It's all around us. Now, now, now we're, we're, we're letting our imaginations run away with this. Here, let me have a look at that note. I'll prove that it's just opened by accident. Now, listen. 11.15 a.m., Mary Ann Hardy broken arm. There, you see, it's perfectly simple. No, wait. There's something further down the page. Oh, read it, Rick. 3.30 p.m., Meredith consultation. Informed Mrs. Meredith that she can... She can never bear a child. She showed no emotion whatever. A strange, cold woman. 
Rick, Rick, you know what that means. I'm beginning to guess. Stella, where were you born? In Paris. Mother and father went abroad for a year. That's when they brought Carmel back. Then that's it. Mary Meredith never had a child. It was Carmel's baby. You mean Carmel was... was my... Rick, this scent of mimosa. You told me that was Mary Meredith's scent. No, my father only wrote it was my mother's scent. Carmel. Mother. Now I know. Stella, it's all clear now. It's Carmel who's been crying all these years. Crying for the little child they took from her. And all the time we thought it was Mary Meredith. We thought it was... <clears throat> Rick, she's back. I feel the cold. Don't worry, Stella. She'll be going now. Did you hear that, Mary Meredith? We're on to you, you icy fraud. It's very plain now. It was you who tried to throw Stella over the cliff. And it was Carmel who saved her. Yes, there goes your saintly legend, Mary Meredith. And you're going with it. Now go on, get out. From now on, this house is for the living. Go on, get out, or we'll laugh you out. Ha, ha, ha! Ha, ha! She's going. She's going, Rick. She's going forever, Pam. There'll be no more uninvited guests in this house. Rick, darling. <sighs> you're trembling. Of course I'm trembling. She might have been my mother-in-law. Thank you, Ray Milland, Ruth Hussey, and Betty Field for a most exciting performance. And now, before we tell you about next week's show, a word from one of America's foremost beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Perhaps you've been promising yourself to try Lady Esther face powder one of these days. Well, there's no better time than right now. Now, when your skin has taken on the rich, deep tones of summer. When it looks sun-tanned and vivid. Try Lady Esther Lucky Rose if you have a fair skin and if it's just lightly tanned. Lucky Rose intensifies the loveliness of that rosy summer hue, makes it look richer and more exciting. Or, if you have a medium complexion, try Lady Esther Rose Brunette. It's a shade that really does something special for your appearance, makes you look more vivid and exciting. For a really dark or olive type of skin, we've always found Rose Beige most becoming. But whether you choose Lucky Rose, Rose Brunette, Rose Beige, or any of the other famous shades of Lady Esther face powder... You'll love the smooth, new baby look of your skin. The delicate, baby-soft finish. The clear, fresh shade. You'll love the way my powder even perks up your eyes and puts sparkle in your hair. So remember, Lady Esther Face Powder. Get yourself a box at the very first opportunity. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Too Many Husbands. It will star Donna Reed, Bill Goodwin, and Frank Sinatra. Be sure to listen. Ray Milan will soon be seen until we meet again. And Betty Field can now be seen in the great moment, both Paramount Pictures. Ruth Hussey appeared through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Dragon Seed. Remember, if you look good, you feel good. Try Lady Esther Lucky Rose Face Powder if your skin is fair and just lightly tanned. Try Rose Brunette for a medium complexion, Rose Beige for a dark olive skin. An ample supply of all these shades is available. All your druggist need do is write Lady Esther, Chicago, and he can get whatever shade you want. Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.